right, fellow Star Wars nerds, and welcome to Unlimited Content, the podcast where two brothers talk about all of Star Wars film and TV in chronological order on the internet as an excuse to hang out more. We're your hosts, Sam and Jack, and this week we're talking about The Clone Wars, Season 2, Episode 15, Senate Murders. Sam, Hi. may the fourth be with you, belatedly. Yep. How are you? I'm good. It is now the Revenge of the Fifth, um, and we are here, <laughs> and we're recording. We, we've claimed... The Star Wars fans have claimed Cinco de Mayo as their own. Yeah, as Revenge of the, the Revenge of the Fifth. Um, yeah. Yes. No. Today it is good. It is good that we are here. It is good that we are recording. It is a good day to be a Star Wars fan. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Lots of good things. Yes. Good, good, good. You know what's not good? <laughs> oh no. Is <laughs> bills. Yeah. Speaking bills of that transitions. Have to pay every time. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of transitions. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, uh, we do have a bill to pay, oh, no. but luckily we're saved yet again <gasps> by a brave sponsor, sponsoring Who? our podcast with 12 listeners. Yeah. Who would dare uh, sponsor us? Who did it? Who would dare? Who done it? Who would, who would take the risk, the financial risk? Yeah. Uh, this week's episode of Unlimited Content is brought to you by Boots. 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 Boots, boots. are good. I've fallen in love with Boots. You know why? Because I got boots. What kind of boots? <laughs> Show me. I want to see the boots. Are they okay. like are they so, Western boots? Or are they like different kind of boots, like uh, lacy uh, boots? So I've got them. So so the the idea behind this was I I've been wanting to get some some shoes that are like a so before this I had basically two pairs of shoes. I had my like slip on tennis shoes that are very very comfortable, but also very like you know like they're made of mesh, so they're very breathable. But that also means they're just like. I can't walk in puddles at all, you know? Yes, um, not good. And, yeah, and then the other pair of shoes I had were dress shoes, which I had fairly recently replaced with some, like, nice dress boots because my old ones were bad mm. um, and old from working in them for many days. That'll do. Um, yeah, I wore them in my old AV job where I had to push equipment around all the time at a hotel, and so they just kind of got bent out of shape real bad. Yep. <laughs> um, so I did some new boots. Anyway, so I got those... Uh, so I had those two, but I had no like in between, like, like not super formal, but not super casual. Just something I could wear, like, you know, get out on the town for, the in, for in between events. Yeah, yeah. not on the town, hanging out. Um, and the other thing was that I didn't have any shoes I could wear in the rain, really. Uh, so there's a lot of that going on uh, lately. So you need that. Yes, it's been, it's been it was storming here today. Um, the last few days has been storming here in Austin, yeah. but um. Yeah, I did a bunch of research and decided to get some nice leather boots. Uh, this is what they look like. They're very, they're oh, very those nice. Are so nice. The brown yeah. with the laces, and you got all the the brass grommets in there, and it's real nice. Good looking shoes. It's real nice. Yeah, they're, they're the quality. They're uh, they're from a company called Thursday Boot I Company. I wonder they're Thursdays because they look like Thursdays. They look really good. <laughs> I get targeted ads yeah. for them all the time because I would like to have boots akin to that. Mm-hmm. I do have some, they're, but they're winter boots, and they're very comfy, but mm-hmm. they're also, like, fleece-lined, and it's now getting up into the 80s, and they can't really wear those. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do have my mm-hmm. cowboy boots, though. Yeah, so... Was, but those are nice boots. You have nice boots. Yeah. Yeah, they're very nice. They're, so, like, for the first few days that I was wearing them, I was, like, concerned that I would maybe gotten the wrong size, because, like, when going through this process, it, it's, like, on their, on Thursday's website, and on, like, in, in general, it, it said that, like, for sizing for boots you generally go half a size down from what your like sneaker size is um and i have super wide feet so i had to order like extra wide boots um so anyway i was worried about what the fit would be i knew it was supposed to be snug at first and that you like you break them in after a bit yeah the leather stretches yeah yeah the first few days i was like this is this is kind of actually painful to walk in is this is this actually my size but then the last couple days i've been wearing them i'm like oh these are actually super comfortable now like i'm shocked at how fast it's it's changed yeah. it's like they're great they're great i love them and i got and like the second day i had them it rained and i was like oh, i could walk through puddles without soaking my socks immediately love <laughs> you know? that for you that's awesome so very happy very uh pleased with my boots um definitely yeah not not a sponsor but i do recommend thursday boot company i did a bunch of research and it looks like these are the best like budget high quality boots that you can get that are like they'll last you a long time and they can be resold if need be and you know so very nice uh thank you to our sponsor 
Boots. Boots, the concept <laughs> For of sponsoring boots. this episode of Unlimited Content. Yes. You know, the other thing is that, like, after getting these boots and wearing th- them for a while, the thought occurred to me that, like, there are so many, like, characters that wear boots that I could cosplay easily now because oh, I have yeah. boots. <laughs> you, you know? Like, yeah. like Jedi wear boots. Jedi Not, wear boots. I don't know if Jedi have, like, laced boots. but They don't. They usually... I've, I, I think they're all like slip on looking things. Are usually, I think they're technically riding boots. So they're mm. like, they go all the way right, up. Basically they get, they're to the really knee. tall. Yeah. They go basically to the knee and they don't really have much of a heel on them. Um, yeah, they're kind of like, right. they're usually like riding boots. Yeah. Well, anyway, there are other characters that have these kinds of yeah. boots. I'm sure, I do think I, I, that uh, yeah. Din Djarin wears boots like that with kind of like mm. a little, he's got like a, a little Beskar kind of cover over the front of them or something. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like they. Them you boots. look at them, they're like those are just like lace-up boots with like a thing on top of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, um, you can be Mando. Before I go further, before we move on from my boot tangent, mm. <laughs> uh, I did want to mention Sam. Have you ever had wool socks before? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I live in the Midwest. I have, this to have is wool so- socks. <laughs> so I did not know about wool socks really up until I was like you know doing research for this and found out that everybody's like you need to wear. The best socks are with with boots are wool socks because mm-hmm. they're like naturally moisture wicking and keep your feet cool, but they're also like really nice and soft and they last a long time. And and I was like, okay, like wool sounds like it would be really warm to me, but I got some some like nice like merino wool socks mm-hmm. to to try it out and wore them all day yesterday and I was like, these are like maybe some of the comfiest socks I've ever worn and yeah. my feet didn't get sweaty and it was weird and cool. <laughs> it's like, so, yes. so that's cool. I'm learning all sorts of things. Dude, life is better when just like things work the way it's supposed to like socks and shoes. It's just, it's amazing yes. what like a good pair of like shoes and socks can do for a dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely something I've realized as I've gotten older is how many of the, the little like quality of life things just add up and, and oh yeah. Yeah. Make the experience of living just, nicer it's just good i appreciate that kind of stuff a lot more yeah these days so it's good um but yeah uh so a bunch of star wars stuff happened this past couple weeks since we last recorded um but before we get into that stuff sam what have you been up to in the last couple weeks since we recorded last well last 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 weekend said a lot of last you did last weekend uh mom dad Mm -hmm. came in town and we hung out all weekend we went to the zoo we went to the petting zoo. We went to a lot of fun restaurants. They hung out with Marion a lot. We played a lot of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. There was lots of rain. We've had it's just been like thunderstorms and rain. It's like we're full on spring in the Midwest right now. Um, so it's mm-hmm. just been some crazy gnarly weather lately. I got a weather radio, which I haven't had weather radio in a long time because like there's uh, been like yeah. risk of tornadoes and things. So I okay. now have. A new fancy weather radio. And I'm all excited about nerdy. Do you remember about. the? Yeah, do you remember the one we had growing up that was like that cube shape? That was one? mine. Graham's got that for me. For me. Yeah, Dad, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, Dad's I mom got yours, that for yeah. me. Uh, when I was like seven years old, because that was like like the peak mm-hmm. of my obsession with the weather. Was with meteorology? Yeah, because mm-hmm. it was right after like their like I, I think it was no they got it for me like right after that big tornado outbreak back in '99. Um. There's like a hundred tornadoes in the span of like seventy two hours, all within like the state of Oklahoma. It was like insane Dang. amount of tornadoes, and one That's like a lot. one or two of them circled uh, our grandparents' house up in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was when like my rabid obsession with the weather began. I'd always been fascinated by weather and things. Like I like mm-hmm. as a kid, I would just be plastered against like our glass front door, just like watching thunderstorms roll in, and mm-hmm. mom and dad have to like get a crowbar out and ply me away from the window because i wanted to watch the storm roll in they're like no there's hail and you could die I'm like okay fine but i want to watch it and then uh and then the weather radio was introduced to me and then i became like i would just like tune into the weather radio listen and like i would be telling dad as a seven-year-old like hey we're in a severe thunderstorm watch right now we need to be doing this <laughs> yeah. and, and uh-huh. he was like i sure thought it was like both adorable and annoying um but <laughs> But yeah, so that was me as a kid, and now it's it's really adorable. Marion is similarly obsessed with the weather. It's yeah. the cutest thing because we had she's inherited your she has inherited my, my, my the the thunder loving gene, 
Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's genetic. Yeah. It is genetic. Uh, but yeah, no, because there was a, a a night about a month or two ago. The, there was like this big old lightning storm. Not a lot of rain, but just like it was like strobe light outside, and a lot of rain and thunder. Mm -hmm. And we like yeah. That night we talked about the difference between lightning and thunder, and like lightning is what you see, and thunder is what you hear, and like. Because for a long time she just oh, booms. I hear booms. I'm like, yep, that's thunder. Mm -hmm. Booms. Yep. And then now she calls it thunder and lightning because she's growing up. Um, yes. Yep. But and thunder and lightning aren't so frightening. But so. I'm scared. Um, thank you, pajama fam. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> pajama Sam. Sam. It's you. Yep. So that's my weather tangent. But yeah, did that. All the <laughs> the weather things and passing on my love of weather and storm chasing to my daughter. Who is three and has no business doing either of those things? Uh, at the the new station I work at, uh, at KVU, we have a vehicle that we call the Storm Chaser that, that we use to like. Is it like an armored you know, truck the, kind of during, thing? It's not armored, but it, it's like a, a big like SUV type okay, thing cool. that I'm sure is outfitted with various whatever. Sure, 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 sure. But yeah, it, it looks mostly like a regular car, except it says uh, Storm Chaser on it. Love it. <laughs> and but it, but it's what they use when they go out to get like footage in storms. Of course. Or, or like, yeah. So good. I like that. Big fan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that. Other fun things I've been doing. Um, I downloaded a emulator onto my phone because Apple let it onto the App Store for some reason. Um, yeah. After like, all, like almost two decades of not allowing it. <laughs> like. Yeah. No. They, let, they've let just it, now I decided. Re I remember in college jailbreaking my iPhone so that I could download this exact emulator onto my phone. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. now it's just like oh yeah no it's just there now and uh jason's one that told me it was there um so thanks a lot jason you sucked like t like probably 20 hours of my life away on this <laughs> in the last like two and a half weeks um mm -hmm. yeah so i downloaded and i just downloaded pokemon yellow it's the only game i downloaded and i'm uh, at the elite four right now <laughs> so dang yeah nice yeah so a lot of fun Doing a lot of that stuff. And then the last big thing, other than watching X-Men, that I've done, uh, is last night was May the 4th. And last night, yes. I went to the Royals game, the Kansas City Royals, because the Texas Rangers were playing, and it was Star Wars night at the K. That's amazing. Yep. So it was that's, the, that's like the this, this Sam Fortyest night of baseball that could possibly is. be. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. I brought two lightsabers, and me and my buddy yeah. Austin... Uh, lightsaber duel during the seventh inning stretch and every dude who asked me like who saw the lightsaber like and like every like grown man who saw the lightsabers was like where did you get those like did you are they giving those out I'm like i brought it from home man like it's it's star wars night of course i brought a lightsaber um yeah but yeah we like lightsaber dueled during the seventh inning stretch trying to get on the jumbotron but it didn't happen and then we just lightsaber Dang. dueled all the way back to the car at the end of the game. But the Rangers won 15 to 4. It was a blowout nice. of a game. Dang. Yeah. So it was a great night of baseball. I was very that's happy. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yep. I'm happy for you. That that sounds amazing. It was it was yeah. very good. And then today, uh, on a little personal note, today is Sarah and I's sixth anniversary of dating. We started dating six Yay, years ago. Congratulations. Today. Yeah. So that's fun. Yay. Yeah, Cinco de Mayo is when we started dating. So you know, about 2018 was the one. Did you have tacos on your first date? We had margaritas. Oh, okay, That's, yeah. that works. Yeah. So we had margaritas right before we got on the podcast. It was nice. It was good. Nice. So we, we, always, we have to come Happy anniversary. Thank you. I would say happy anniversary to Sarah, but I know she doesn't listen to this podcast. She so. doesn't. Lame. <laughs> Lame. How dare she? She supports the um, podcast, well, cool. but does not listen to the podcast. So that's, that's all I can she, ask. Yeah, yeah. Like she still approves. She's forced of me. by tolerating us and yeah, our shenanigans. She's like, yeah. This. She's like, Sam. This is good for you. I don't want to listen to it, but it's good for you. You do it. I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Love you. Cool. More rad. Um, let's see. Uh, so I uh, have been playing some more video games and watching television things, and so I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Um, yeah. So I. Uh, it is. It will be over by the time uh, this this podcast is out. But there's a bundle right now uh, on itch.io, which is like an indie games website. Um, it's like eight dollars, and it's it's a bundle that that uh, and you get like over a thousand games or something, mostly just like small indie games and stuff. But it's it's uh, all the proceeds go to Gaza, so oh. it's, it's like it's called like like the like bundle for Palestine, games bundle for Palestine, something like that. So 
Um, so I, I got that in one of the games. Is it, is it can uh, you play it on Steam or what is it They're like? Uh, you can play it on on your PC. They're all PC games. Okay, so, cool, great. I'll have to yeah, it's, that. it's not through Steam, but it's yeah. You just like download the files. Okay, so yeah, I'll look into that. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, it's it's over like within the next few hours. I think so after the podcast. If yeah, you send me a link. I'll see if I can get it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, but the uh, point is, uh, there was a one of the games in the bundle is uh, a game that I've been obsessed with for the past week or so called A Monster's Expedition, and it's just a very like simple like simple like like easy to learn difficult to master sort of puzzle game Mm -hmm. um where you play as a little like kind of a bigfoot looking monster man except he's in it like round and cartoony so he just kind of looks like an egg (laughs) but um he is uh it's it's you're going from island to island and each island is a puzzle where you have to like knock down trees and then push them and roll them in different configurations so that you can like make it from the island to the next one Ooh, and it's I like that yeah it's, it's very like a, a, chill a physics-based game like those kind of yeah yeah um it, it's it's i would say it's closer to like those kind of slide puzzles that you would do oh, you okay. know got it um yeah it, it's less about physics and more about like you know figuring out you know what direction to push each log in what order you know uh, okay, um, okay, okay. got it yeah um but yeah it's very chill and very nice uh I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's, it's also very difficult at times, but it's one of those where it's like it's just difficult enough that I can usually figure it out. And when I do figure it out, I feel I feel like real smart. You know, it's it's good. You are real smart. Um, thank you, Sam. Um, so I've been playing that. It's kind of the main thing I've been playing lately. Uh, a game got announced that I'm very excited for. Uh, there's a a game series uh, called the Steam World series. Okay. Um, which are a, a bunch of video games made by the same developer and set in this same like steampunk universe nice. where it's like inhabited by steam powered robots. Uh, so they all like, kind of share an aesthetic and a continuity, but they're all kind of different games. So the first one was called steam world dig and it's kind of like a 2d side scroller exploration mining type game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that one got a direct sequel. And then there was another one, uh, called Steam World Heist, which I love, which is a takes place in space, and you are on a ship, and you and your crew are like basically space pirates. And the game it's it's a turn based strategy game, but it's side scrolling, so it's like you control your characters, and you have a certain amount you can move. And then the kind of mechanical gimmick is that you aim your gun, uh, and you can ricochet bullets around the ship. And so it's about, like, lining up your shots perfectly and trying to, like, be clever and efficient with your shots. And anyway, it's it's very satisfying, cool. Um, The art style is great. Sound effects are great. All the SteamWorld games are are consistently high quality uh, across all different genres. Um, But anyway, SteamWorld Heist got uh, a sequel announced called SteamWorld Heist 2. I'm very excited. It looks super fun. It's coming out later this year. Like, I want to say August, maybe? September or something like that. Um... And uh, the first game, the soundtrack was done by a band called Steam Powered Giraffe. I love Steam Powered Giraffe. Yes, they're great. They're they're a a steampunk band, like kind of a concept band where all the each member of the band like plays a character and they get it, they get into like costume and makeup to make themselves look like robots, like robot people. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of delightful and whimsical, and yeah. they, they and make it's like good music. And, it's like so satisfying yeah. to watch, and I don't know. Mm-hmm. And the the main the like main singer he's he has such like just like a crystal clear voice there's just something about his he's voice great yeah yeah i love it i love him mm. yeah uh so yeah they, they did the soundtrack for steam world heist one and they are coming back to do steam world heist two which is very exciting because I, I love their music and i love this game so it was just it was a you know two exciting two things that got me excited at once which is i i you know i'm getting a sequel to a, a game i love and also more music from a band i love and it's it's just nice it's very good i'm very excited about that um, and then so that, that's kind of all video gaming stuff, but I do, I do have two other video game related things to talk about, which are, I watched two different video game adaptation TV shows <gasps> these past couple weeks. You tell, you tell. Um, yeah. And for the first one, we're gonna have to start, uh, by going into our reoccurring sub podcast, got a podcast, got a podcast. Where we talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, we need to get like a little jingle that plays every time we like 
to that. Yeah, I, th I think in the past what I've done is I I put like I just play the ring sound effect. Perfect. The ba -ding! yeah. Perfect. <laughs> you probably already heard that, listener. Uh, I, yeah, uh, right. I remember that now. Welcome back to Got a Podcast, where this week we're talking about Knuckles on Paramount Plus, the Knuckles miniseries. It's it's six yes. half hour episodes set after the events of the second Sonic movie. Idris Elba comes back as Knuckles, and it's basically about Knuckles going on a road trip with, like, the the deputy character from the movies. Um, Carrie Elwes is in it as, like, the main villain, basically. Nice. Uh, he's a he's a bowler. <laughs> what? That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It's, yeah. Because I, I watched the first episode. I have not had okay. time to watch the rest. But I, it was mm -hmm. very bowling yeah. heavy, and I like that it carries on. That's great. <laughs> Yes, it's great. Um, yeah, it, this show, I watched it all in one sitting with uh, a group of friends who I I last uh, we we marathoned the first two movies recently, and then well, as soon as the the show came out, we all got together and it marathoned it, um, and it was a lot of fun. It's a very like you know it, it's a it is about the same level of like quality and tone as the movies so if you like the movies you'll, you'll probably like this and if not then you probably won't but yeah, it's like the know. exact same vibe but mm -hmm, yeah it's super but it's super like lighthearted and fun and, and there are a lot of moments like i was surprised at how many like genuine kind of laugh out loud moments there were most of it is kind of like you know it's fun and then there were occasionally some like a joke happens or i'm like that was genuinely really funny and clever <laughs> yeah um but uh it's wacky and it's fun, and it goes some really weird places I don't expect. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to hearing what you think of the rest of it once you get around to it, Sam. But um, it's, it's super fun. Yeah, the cast in this show is kind of fascinating because Christopher Lloyd is in it. He does a voice of a character. Um, oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, and like I said... Uh, Carrie Elwes. Carrie Elwes is in it. <laughs> and also... Um, Stockard Channing, I just remembered it. <laughs> yeah. Who's anyway, play? yeah. Stock Stockard Channing. Uh she is Oh, she. Yeah. Uh, oh, she played, got it. Yeah. Yeah. She plays Wade's mom in the show. She plays the mom of the deputy. So you'll you'll see her later on in the Great. show. But Stockard Channing, she was in Greece, but she was also uh Abigail Bartlett, the first lady in the West Wing. Yeah. And now oh. she's in this. In yes. Knuckles. <laughs> right. That's where so, I was from. I was like, I know that face. Yes. Who is that? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Kid Cuddy is in the show. That's fun. Yeah. Kid, Kid, Kid Cuddy's in this. He's one of the, yeah, he's, he's a villain. He's, he's one of the bad guys. But he doesn't um, have like a name or yeah. is he just Kid Cuddy? Is he is just Kid Cuddy one of the villains? Like as himself? No, <laughs> no he plays a character. Okay. It's not like, all the other, yeah, all the other, like on Google, like under the cast, mm -hmm. all the other like actors have their character's name underneath it. And it's just Kid Cuddy. Mm -hmm. Kid Cuddy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool if it was just Kid Cuddy. That would be just, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah. Anyway, Knuckles, super fun, super weird, super fun. That's how I describe it. That's my review. Uh, this has been the end of our, our podcast. Got a podcast? Our sub podcast called Got a Podcast. But ding! All right, cool. Moving on. But other show I watched. <laughs> <laughs> the other show I watched was uh, I finally finished the Fallout show on Amazon Prime. Um, I've been. Wait, we, I've been waiting to watch it with my friends because, like, like you know, I, I, I would have probably, like, finished it a lot earlier, except that we were, like, trying to fit all our schedules together so we could all watch it together. Yes. We did eventually do that. We, we finished it today. Um, it's very good. I think it's 10, 11 episodes, something like that. Um, and I think this is probably my new favorite video game adaptation. Wow. Like, just in terms of, like... In terms of, like, quality and, like... like it, It's a really good show, first of all. Like, it's fun and entertaining and well-written and well... A lot of great performances. Um, very well-paced. Lots of great mystery and lots of good, like, reveals and payoffs at the end of the show. Um, it's also very, like, faithful to the source material. But it doesn't feel like it's, like, retreading old ground. You know, it, it's, it feels like a Fallout show without, like, telling the same stories in any of the games. Because it's it takes place in the same universe, but not... It's not they're not like adapting one of the games, basically. Cool. Um, so it's it's very good uh, as especially as a, a fan of the game series. I was very happy uh, uh, during the last few episodes. There were a lot of things that like are, you know, 
if you hadn't played the games, you wouldn't recognize them as being anything special. Mm -hmm. But as someone who has played the games, I'm like, I know what that is. And like, they're, you know, cool, exciting things. And I I was watching this with a a group of mostly other Fallout fans. So we were all like very excited when, you know, people came on screen or elements were referred to. They were like, that thing from the game. I've been there in the game. Or I remember that. Or what does that mean for the lore? And, you know, very... Uh, it's it's a really really great show. I would recommend it to anybody unless you're squeamish because there is a lot of gore <laughs> in ah. this show. Got it. Um, but uh, yeah, Fallout, very good. Very excited for season two whenever that comes out. Um, highly recommended. It's uh, I I still haven't watched all of The Last of Us. Um, but like this and The Last of Us seem to be like the two recent video game adaptations that everybody that have kind of received critical acclaim and are like beloved by like non gamers and the people who played the games. Um, and I just think that's cool that we're getting more stuff like that. Yeah. It's very exciting. All right. So that's kind of what we've been up to except, uh, star Wars day happened. I know you Sam, you already talked a little bit about what you did on star Wars day. You went to the game. Was, were there any other star Wars things you did this weekend? Uh, yes. I watched tales of the empire last night. After the oh, game. you did. Yeah. I watched it after the game. Oh, yeah. dang it, I didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, no. It was very good. I, I didn't it. watch it because you, cause you said you were going to have time to watch it, so I was like, okay, I'll wait for well, I'll wait until next week. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to, and then, like, I just got home from the game and was in bed and was just wired, and so I just, like, got on my AirPods mm-hmm. and just watched on my laptop. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I won't. spoiler-free, what did you think? Uh, it was good. It was good. Um, mm-hmm. It gave really good backstory to Morgan Elsbeth and then kind of what's happened... Because it kind of all all of Morgan Ellis' best episodes happen before what we see in like I mean yeah we hear or die so everything has to happen before we see correct it. But... yes <laughs> uh, but then Barris's episodes happen after we last see her in the Clone Wars um, so it's yeah. cool to kind of see what happened to her and kind of her journey and it was a really interesting like two kind of parallel stories that like it was very similar to tales of the jedi where it's like you have mm-hmm. one person going one way one person going another way and it's just very like really cool really artsy a lot of not not a lot of dialogue really a lot of really good action stunning mm-hmm. visuals um not as i didn't like it as much as i like tales of the jedi but i think that's just because mm-hmm. i have less buy-in on these two characters yeah they're, they're definitely more like they're interesting characters but they're, but they're not like People that we've it's had as much Ahsoka time to like, Dooku, right? get invested in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, not, they're not characters that are like iconic that, that we've had time to invest in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it very good. That my only complaint was that just like I wasn't as big a fan of these characters as I was the other two characters. But like, who sure. else are you gonna do? Anakin? No. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tales of the Jedi Anakin is just the, the Star Skywalker Wars. saga. It's the Skywalker saga. <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So it was good. I really liked it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and you and you, you uh got a you have a little ship there with you, don't I you? I do. Yes. My lovely wife got me uh a Lego Star Wars set of um this is Obi Wan's Jedi Starfighter from uh Attack of the Clones. So yes. It's the red one. He's holding it up to the camera right now. It's yeah, adorable. It, it is adorable. Great. And uh, it came with where are my little Lego dudes? Oh, they're up here. Yeah. Your little dudes. It came with uh, R four, who is currently in the ship, but it's cool because like you have on the I'm sh- I'm showing you on this audio format podcast, but uh, yeah, the, imagine it in your mind's little, eye. The, the little R four unit's head swivels mm-hmm. on there. Oh, ooh, that's nice. But yeah, it also like this part pops out, and his like mm-hmm. you can see he's got the little. Uh, oh, you the, can store the body. You can store the body in there. That was happening. Yeah, you can store the body that's of cool. the, the that's nice. in there. So it's nice. Mm-hmm. And it's got the little... The fact that the head can swivel is yeah, nice. Because like, I remember, like... Yeah, because in, in, I used to have this set, but, like, the original version, like, when Attack of the Clones was a new movie. And yes, I remember that. It uh, This is much better designed. It has cooler mm-hmm. things. It's got little little shooty lasers, and it's got a little uh, radio dish for when he had just made contact with Prime Minister Kamino. Uh, I'm just making I'm just contact with the pr- I'm just making contact with the full pr- Yeah, but yeah. the Obi Wan uh, minifig it has him in his hood, but it also but it also came with 
You got his hair. So, yeah, oh, you got his hair. Cool. Yeah, he's long. It's, attack the clone's hair. Yep. Yeah. And it's a double. It's Jesus hair. It's, it's Jesus hair. So it's double sided. It's like it's got one side has the little uh, microphone <gasps> thing that he wears to talk, mm-hmm. and the other side cool. is just his face. And then it nice came detail. with, I believe, this is the Prime Minister of Kamino. Uh huh. Yeah. It's it's one it's one of the Kaminoans. Yeah. Yeah. Long, I have the long neck kind of alien. We can look it up. I still I have the box still right here. <gasps> what does it say? It is Tonway. Is it it's Tonway. It's Tonway. Ton, Tonway, okay. I think Tonway is the Prime Minister of Kamino. I don't know. Probably. Probably. We can look it up, but... What are we, a Star Wars podcast? We don't know things about no, Star Wars. We don't know nothing about nothing. So Somebody called Cal. Get him back here. Yeah, Cal! He knows. Tell me. <laughs> Cal would know. Cal's probably yelling at his phone right now. Like, it's Come him! On, Cal! Cal, why aren't you... Why, why are you here with us, supporting us right now? <laughs> yeah. We should have you back on. We'll have you back on soon. At some point, I'm sure. When you're when you're not busy philosophizing, uh, well, cool. So that that was your your Star Wars day. It was baseball, lightsabers, yes, Legos, Tales of the Empire. Awesome. Uh, my Star Wars day. Uh, I let's see. I, I spent the day with friends doing mostly not Star Wars things, but I did manage to go to um. Holocron, which is the Star Wars store here in Austin, hmm. uh, and there were a bunch of people there, and they had a little bit of like, there was an event going on, you know, it, it wasn't a lot, it was just you know people hanging out. I think earlier in the day they had like a bunch of dogs in for adoption, just like to have, just they were running an event, and it was like May the Fourth, you come in and adopt these dogs that's from cool. a local shelter. A little yeah, that's cool. Star Wars and puppies doesn't get better than that. Excellent, yes, obviously, yes, definitely. Um, and but yeah, while I was there, uh, I did get a souvenir. I bought something. What'd you get? What'd you get? Um, What'd you get? It's, it's behind me. <gasps> so uh, I got a poster. It's big. Oh, it's a poster. That makes sense. So what? What is it? What? Check you. You got a full size poster of the Clone Wars final season, with it's got like Anakin and Ahsoka and Obi Wan and Maul, and it has the Bad Batch on it. And it's got the five yes. first, and it's so cool. Yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I've been wowza. This particular poster uh, for a while, just because I, I wanted something Clone Wars related of art on my wall, and I love the the final season poster. And they had a, a little a section where you can, they, they had posters for sale at Holocron, and this is one of them. And so I bought that yesterday, and then today picked up a frame for it at Michael's. I love it. And well done. Framed it. I haven't put it up on the wall yet, obviously, but I have it now, and it's, it's great. It's pretty, and I love it. There's something about like, I don't know, like just putting art in a frame j- behind like glass makes it feel so much nicer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> immediately, it does. it's like this is, yeah. It's also like, I'm I'm afraid whenever it's like outside of a, a, a frame, like oh this could get wrinkled or, or something, you know, yeah. or. You know, I could step on it or it could get torn or whatever. But once it's in frame, it's like it's protected and also it looks super nice. So, love it. Very happy about that. I love it. Um, and then also while I was there, they were giving out little, like, kind of mini sized posters for the Acolyte. Ooh. Um, did you get one of those? Like, I did get one of those. It's on my fridge. <laughs> love it. Because I, I didn't, I don't have a frame for it or anything. But that is a perfect But I, spot. I wanted it hanging up somewhere, but I didn't want to, like, poke it i didn't want to stab it right so i was like I, I got some magnets recently for my fridge so wonderful it's just the yeah the refrigerator door is just that poster now basically excellent <laughs> so um um i did look it up ton way was a kaminoan female administrative aide who served prime minister lama Su during the last years of the galactic republic uh she's the kaminoan who greets obi-wan when he just shows up at kamino and right. he's like, Master Jedi, the Prime Minister is expecting you. Like, I'm expected? Of course. After all these years, we're beginning to think you weren't coming. That's right. That's Tom Way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does. I'm trying to think if um, Tom Way ever shows up in the Bad Batch or if, if it was just. Well, I have her uh, Wikipedia page pulled up right now. I'm reading uh-huh. directly from it. So let's see. Uh, appearances. Yes. She is in three episodes of The Bad Batch. Aftermath, Replacements, and Bounty Lost. And Bad, what's Bad Batch Hunted? What is that? 
Oh, it's a probably a mobile game or something. It's a a young reader's graphic novel. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. So she's in that, and that's yeah. Cool. Well, uh, speaking of the Bad Batch, uh, this past week the Bad Batch ended. <laughs> no, it did. No, it ended very well though. It was. It was it was great. It yeah. was a very good ending. Mm-hmm. Jack, you want to yeah, so you want to share we, your uh, just a quick little thirty second summary of what happened and your thoughts about it. Sure. Yeah. So this this was the uh, the final episode was uh, the Bad Batch shows up on uh, Tantis and they break uh, a bunch of the clones out and they break out uh, Amiga. Obviously, mm-hmm. and in in the process, and also they rescued like the kids that were also in the vault that were being experimented on. Um, and God, I can't, my brain is blanking on names today. What's the Cameron Owens name in in the show? Uh, um, oh gosh, this isn't going as planned. Nothing to see here. Nala say, Nala say. It okay, there it is. Got gosh, it. Gosh dang. Yeah, we, oh, so okay. obviously anyway. it was Nala say. We knew that from the beginning. Right. Yeah, I was not saying we knew that the whole time. The whole time. I never, yeah. I never forgot. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in the final episode of the Bad Batch, uh, the crew shows up and they uh, attempt to, to break uh, out a bunch of imprisoned clones. They break out the Imperial officer guy. They break out uh, Nalase. Nalase goes to the vault and uh, blows it up with her and the Imperial guy in it, uh, so that they can't continue the project necromancer program anymore um so heroic sacrifice there and hemlock gets shot and falls off a bridge into the jungle and also uh omega lets out a zillow beast and now there's just a zillow beast roaming the jungles of this planet (laughs) yes tantus just has a zillow beast now yes and then so then yeah they, they all make it out nobody dies at least none of the the bad batch dies that is uh, yeah. Even though it, it seemed like there were there were several moments where I was like, like they get, they're going to kill off somebody, right? Like I thought they were going to kill off Wrecker because he was in rough shape for a while. He was in rough shape, but but uh, yeah, so they they, they did that. They uh, got back to to Pabu and they brought um, Emery with them, who had defected and helped them get the the kids out and escape and everything. Um, and then we get a a flash forward like epilogue at the end where we get to see like adult omega or at least like young adult omega or like i don't know like late late teens early 20s kind of i would guess it's hard to tell she's a cartoon so right (laughs) but like it's it's sometime later and like because because uh hunter is like significantly more grayed and has a long beard now yes yes um and they have a short conversation before adult omega goes off uh to leave pabu and join the rebellion as a pilot Yes. Which is super cool. It's super cool, which means now, hopefully, the next Star Wars animated series is going to follow Omega in, like, a some sort of another, like, a Rebels era anthology series like the Clone Wars. That's what I would... That would be cool. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. That's my dream, is that we get, like, another Clone Wars, but it's in the Rebel, like, in the Age of the Rebellion. Yeah, so original trilogy era, Clone Wars type anthology series... And Omega is one of the main characters that we like return to. Yes, over and over. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah, but I'm regardless. I am excited to see what happens uh, with Omega, whatever that means in the future, and also to see what happens with uh, Saj Ventress because yes. she's back and still in the world. And we haven't, you know, we we, we saw her in one episode, and then she left, and who knows what she's up to. But I'm, I, w- I want to see more of her. That'd be awesome. I, I would love to see her in the the original trilogy era to see what she's up to during then yeah that would be great um, yeah um but yeah i'm very like it was really good but my the main emotion i was left with at the end of this was just kind of like oh i don't have any more bad bash episodes to watch yeah <laughs> like, that was the main emotion this, it was like oh yeah. it's done oh yeah this, this, this has been such a comfort show for me in yeah. a lot of ways it's just like you know, most of the time it's just a fun like action show. It's also very well written. There's some really great dramatic moments. Like this whole past few episodes, like the finale stuff has all been excellent. Like, yeah, I just it's been just such a. I'm, I'm gonna miss my uh, Star Wars the A Team show. Yes. You know? 
<laughs> yep, that's exactly what this was. Oh man. It's also interesting, like, in a way, this is kind of the end of the Clone Wars. Like, yeah, like officially. This is like kind of the end of the prequel era, too. Just weird. In a way. It's definitely the end of the Clone yeah. Wars. Yeah, because yeah, this is a spinoff of the Clone Wars series. And actually, after finishing The Bad Batch, I went back and rewatched the arc in Season 7 where they introduced The Bad Batch and then watched the first episode of The Bad Batch series. Just kind of because I was like, yeah, man, I want to go back and see like where it started from. And it was like, man, this this was great from the start. Wasn't yeah. It? yeah, it really was. And because like the, the first episode of the Bad Batch, wasn't it like it was them experiencing Order 66? Isn't that what it was? Yeah, it's Order 66 is episode one. Yeah, yeah. because of course it is. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Order 66 with uh, little Caleb Doom, Kanan Jarrus. Oh, yeah. Oh wow! How about that? And we see Devil Balaba die, and yeah, dang it, dang it, dang it. Yeah, so super. Yeah, what a great, what a great show. I'm very much looking forward to whatever is next. I was kind of hoping that like when like after the the finale aired that they were gonna say like, hey, coming up next, here's the next animated series yeah. that's coming out. Or like Omega, Which, we'll I guess we did get Tales of the Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be great to get have like a, an Avengers like just a little bit like yeah. Omega will return in the Avengers Infinity Explosions. Yep. Ba, 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 ba. Yep. I'm an Avenger. Avengers. Avengers assemble. All right. I'm going to let's stop uh, it want, with my bad Omega Kiwi accent. and Korg to <laughs> team up now. All of the Kiwi characters <laughs> from... What a... Yes. Yes, yes. Amazing. Um... All right, uh, so yeah, Tales of the Empire was released. Star Wars Day happened. Um, the one last Star Wars related thing that happened in the last couple weeks was we got a new poster and a new trailer for The Acolyte on Star Wars Day. Yeah, on May the 4th. Um, Sam and I just watched the trailer together uh, right before recording the podcast. Yes. Um, I had seen it once before. Sam, what did you think of it? Oh, it's scary. It's going to be fun. It's scary? It's scary. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so excited to see, like, it's so cool to be seeing a show that is, like, like, all of the live-action shows that we've gotten so far have been, like, very explicitly connected to other things that we've seen before. Yeah. Or, like, you know, you know it was, like, The Mandalorian is, you know... We've, we've seen live-action Mandalorians before, and then a lot of that ended up being, like, about Boba Fett and Tatooine and, you know, things that we're familiar with already. Um, and, obviously, Obi-Wan Kenobi is just, like, a, a sequel to Revenge of the Sith. And, right. and uh, Ahsoka is a spinoff of The Mandalorian and of Clone Wars and Rebels. and But now with uh, The Acolyte, I feel like this is the first time we're getting a show where it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know any of these characters. I'm just excited to see what happens. It, it, it's, a, it's a different feeling to be like, I don't really know anything going into this. So anything could happen as opposed to having some like set of expectations about, I hope this character does this or whatever. It's just, right. it's all new stuff. Yeah, I'm very excited. The because in the trailer we got a excuse me, I'm yawning. We got a glimpse at the the Sith, who kind of just shows yes. up, and that's the first time we've seen them. And they're they're wearing this like scary looking helmet that like looks. You know, we're talking right after watching. It. it looks like something out of like a Reddit creepy pasta kind of thing. Just <laughs> yeah, because it looks almost, kind of like a flattened Vader helmet. Uh, and then, like, around the front, there's this, basically where the smile would be, kind of stretching back, like, halfway. All, all the way to the ears. Across the head. Yeah, all the way to the ears. This, like, thin, almost looks like tiny little sharp teeth. So it, it's like a, a big, like, razor sharp grin sort of With no creepy eyes. situation. Which is so, it's so cool. It, I love it. It was very <laughs> cool. It was unsettling, but very cool. Mm. And yes. I'm so excited. I, yeah, so the Acolyte looks awesome. My one, like, thing I'm worried about, about the Acolyte, mm -hmm. is I don't want them to bring Yoda into it. Because, like, you know, he's around, he's just still a big character around this time. Mm -hmm. And I know it would make sense to bring Yoda, but then I feel like they'd just be leaning on Yoda a lot in the show. And mm -hmm. I don't... I would not mind them having Yoda in I'd, as, like, I'd, a like, cameo. Yeah, like a, like a yeah. two-minute, like, one-scene cameo. Awesome. Perfect. Just like, oh yeah, Yoda's here. But like, he's not important to the story other than like this one scene. Like, that's all. Yeah. I don't know. Because I feel like it yeah, was. I want to see Yoda with hair. 
Yes. Let's see Yoda. He, he, has, he has a fro. He has, <laughs> his college days. Just. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I agree with that. It, it, it's like, I think part of what makes the show feel so special to me is the fact that it's so much of it is unknown. Um, although it was cool to see some familiar stuff in, like we saw the, a, a, a wide shot of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, which was cool. And it was also cool to see like, an earlier Coruscant where like it looks like there wasn't there weren't as many tall buildings and I also think that the Jedi Temple wasn't as tall as it is in the prequels like I think they add added onto it maybe yeah. later on um but uh yeah that's super cool and I loved the there's a, a quote like at one point one of the characters in the trailer is like alluding to the fact that like you know the Jedi have been you know had have had power over the galaxy for this long uh, under the guise of protection, but what are they really doing? It, it, it's it's cool to to kind of hear a little bit of the the inklings of like the plot and of what they're kind of going for with this show, and I'm just excited to see like basically the beginning of the end of the Jedi Order. Yeah, you know, we, you know if if the prequels was like the end of the Jedi Order, this is the beginning of that. This is the the precursor to that. Yeah, which is the, that's what it seems like. So it does. That's cool. Very very excited. Uh, all right, so that was what we've been up to. That's what's been happening with Star Wars. Uh, Sam, are we ready to move on to our main segment for the day? For sure, dude. All right. Uh, well, today we're going to be talking about one episode of The Clone Wars, The Clone Wars Season 2, Episode 15, Senate Murders. Um, yeah, this is a, a Padme-centric episode. Indeed. There's a mystery, there's murder, there's politics, there's, there's been a, a weird up. cop. There's a weird cop. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess the the moral of this episode is searching for truth. The, the moral of this episode is searching for the truth is easy. Accepting the truth is hard. I would argue that searching for the truth can also be hard, but sure, whatever. It's not as catchy. An approachable defense. War on many fronts. While battles are fought by clones in the field, a different war is waged in the Galactic Senate. As heavy losses add up, a group of senators led by Halle Bertone of Camino propose an, es- an escalation of troop production. Senator Padme Amidala, recognizing that more troops will only prolong the fighting, works tirelessly with her allies to introduce a bill to cut down military spending and stop the creation of more clone troopers. Ta-da. All right, here we go. Uh, Padme's party loses. What? I was just gonna say I love that, like how on the nose Halle Bertone is. <laughs> you know, Cause, yeah, yeah, because in, in what way? Well, Halliburton is a defense contractor that creates weapons for the U.S. government. Oh, yeah, I did not know. This. Yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah. So hmm. it, Halle Bertoni is literally named after. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, I did not know that. Mm. Gosh, um, well, the more you know. Yep. All right. Star Wars isn't political. What are you talking about? Nope, Padme's party loses another senator's support who was worried about public opinion. However, Anaconda Far is optimistic that they win this matter. When Padme goes on the floor of the Grand Convocation Chamber in the Senate, she reasons that increasing clone production would only strain the Republic's finances and only lead to more bloodshed. She advocates that if they put a stop to this, then they can return to the use of diplomacy. Everyone applauds her speech as a result. However... When she exits her hover platform, Senator Mi Dichi comments on her performance, though not as a compliment, just considering it unpatriotic. Padme retorts that the only unpatriotic thing she finds is his advocating war. Padme, Bill Organa, Far, Lolo Purs, and Mon Mothma celebrate with drinks. However, their celebration is rudely interrupted by Senator Halle Bertoni, who accuses them of being separatist supporters for opposing the production bill. Padme and Lolo protest that they were only trying to return the use of diplomacy, to which Bertone claims had failed the Republic long ago. Far ushers her out, reminding her that though the Kaminoans' contribution with the clones may have gotten them into the Republic, it does not give her free reign around the Senate. Bertone leaves anyway, but not before warning that the war will not end soon. As the Senator's toast, Far suddenly collapses and dies! Oh no. Dang. Oh no. Later, Far has been given a funeral before being transported back to Rhodia. Padme tries, to, tries comforting Lolo, who was Far's protege, before they are summoned to Chancellor Palpatine's office, where multiple police droids are. 
Inspector Tan Devo explains to them that Far was murdered, instantly killed by poison. He believes that some secret of his came out and one of his political opponents decided to eliminate him. Padme and Organa insist that Far had no secrets and even his enemies respected him. Devo states that he will carry out the investiga- his, this investigation his way. Tan Devo is a, such a weird looking... He's, it's he's <laughs> so, very yeah. funny looking character. Uh, yeah. who, who, we, we talked about this before, but who does, who does he... Because he, it like this character mm-hmm. design is kind of a trope in uh, like in animation because like there's like a couple yes. characters like in Looney Tunes that look exactly like this and it's supposed to it's after some yes. actor right like yeah the, the actor Peter Laurie yeah uh, yeah very famous actor from from early days Hollywood uh, with a very distinctive face and distinctive look um, and. Yeah, there are definitely back in like Looney Tunes, there were a bunch of characters that looked like him or like maybe were explicitly supposed to be him. And I looked at like his Wikipedia page and there's no references anywhere to like him explicitly being based on uh, Peter Laurie. But um, there is like a not a live action, technically illustration of him, but a like photorealistic illustration that was done for some like reference book or something Mm -hmm. and it looks almost exactly like peter laurie did Ah. so it's like yeah it's 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 pretty clear Um, yeah nice uh before we get back to this i did i want to correct myself on Uh hallie bertoni um so this is from Uh her wikipedia page reviewers Mm -hmm. have noted that bertoni's name resembles that of halliburton an american oil company that has been criticized for its connections to the iraq war and u.s vice president dick cheney Subjects that have previously been lambasted by Clone Wars creator George Lucas. So, mm. it's an oil company that has a lot of connections to the Iraq War. So, gotcha. Similar vibes. Still though, yeah. yeah, similar vibes. They just got the kind of company wrong. Yeah, anyway. yeah. No, it's 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 definitely it's still in line with George Lucas's like yeah, not being a fan of uh, war or of the Bush administration yeah. or or fascists yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not not into fascists. No. <laughs> that George Lucas. All right. Um, Padme and Organa arrive at the docks, only to be attacked by a hooded figure who shoots at them atop cargo containers. Their attacker escapes by releasing a container right by them after a chase, knocking Organa off and leaving him dangling on the edge. Padme is forced to help him just before Coruscant's security force arrives. Devo isn't happy that they took matters into their own hands, as now the killer is alerted to their presence. Padme then realizes that Dichi must have set them up. The three return to Dichi's office, only to find him dead with a dagger to his chest. Ah! Oh no. Devo puts the senders under protective custody in case the killer is after them. Lolo, however, refuses to cooperate and walks out. Devo then asks the others who else knew that they were at the talk at the docks. When Padme states that Bertoni was the o- was the other senator, Devo goes to her office, only for his droids to inform him that she had already left. When he returns to the senators, Lolo comes rushing in, stating that Bertoni had attacked her. Coruscant security force arrests Bertoni, who denies murdering Far or attacking Lolo, as she saw no political gain in doing so. Devo attempts to trick her into confessing, putting together that she conveniently was in both Padme and Dichi's office, and may have been to the docks. He further presents a data pad detailing the poison that was used to kill Far was Kaminoan made that only affected Rodians. Despite Bertoni's protests, Devo orders her to be taken away, seeing that all the evidence points against her. Padme, however, quickly pieces together the clues, realizing that Lolo would have also died unless she drank too. Found out, Lolo takes Padme hostage with a small blaster. She reveals that she killed Far because of the war he brought to Rodia, believing that they needed a new leader after showing his weakness. Padme argues that he just made a mistake, but she refused to listen to reason. Lolo explains that the meeting at the docks was just her trying to scare Far, but he wouldn't go away. So Lolo removed him, and when she heard that Dichi knew about the meeting, she had to kill him too. Devo discreetly activates the police droids outside <clears throat> outside the officer, who surprises the traitorous aid. Padme knocks the blaster out of Lolo's hand and delivers a knockout punch. Later, the bill for the clone production has been passed. Padme runs into Palpatine in the halls of the Senate, who tells her that the reinforcements will help further their way to peace. The end. The end. This is a good little little political intrigue heist to done it kind of story. It's fun. Yeah. It was neat. It was cool. It's good. Uh yeah, I don't know. Not not a 
feel like I don't have a ton to say about this episode. Right. I guess it's interesting in that it is kind of a continuation of the, like, uh, the first episode where we meet uh, Anaconda Far, where he, like, basically betrays the Republic to, yeah. to bring the Separatist onto his planet and then, like, realizes he messed up. Um, and it, he, like, in this and every, every, like, a lot of the other episodes that he's been in, not, not that he's been in a ton of episodes, but yeah. uh, in this episode and previous ones he's been in, he's re- expressed that regret and kind of how he's, like, really dedicated himself to doing what he can to make up for that mistake. But, like, even in that original episode, it was, like, he was doing what he could to, for the sake of his people. Like, he always had kind of the interests of his people at heart. And so he was, like, a good guy, just, you know, misguided that one time. But, um, so, yeah, it's a bummer to see a generally a good senator go, because we don't have a ton of those nope. <laughs> in in the Galactic right. Senate. One less good senator. But, um, yep, that's a bummer. But, um... Yeah, it was a cool little detective story. Uh, the police officer guy was fun in a weird, or weird in a fun way, I guess I, guess I should say. Yeah. Uh, I looked at his voice. It's very cartoony, very <laughs> fun to listen to. Um, kind of nasally. Um, yeah, just kind of politics. And I guess it's always nice to get an episode where... Uh, we kind of see the other side of the war a bit. Yeah. I guess so much of the Clone Wars is focused the, on, the you front know, the front lines, lines yeah. and yeah. Yeah, it's good. Well, yeah. Yep, okay. Jack, Jack, do you have a favorite part? I like the part where, I mean, I, I think my favorite part was definitely the moment where, where Padme has her brain blast and, yeah, <laughs> and like pieces the mystery together at the last minute and realizes that it, it had to be Lolo. That, that did the murder and yeah that was that's that's always a a fun moment for me is the the twist reveal or like the the moment when somebody figures out the mystery yeah it's always really exciting to me and then Padme punches Lolo yeah just knocks her out with one punch so that was cool too cold cocker done <laughs> yep what about you Sam did you have a favorite moment uh probably probably that whole that's that last scene um mm-hmm. with yeah just her discovering that Lolo was the one who did it it's always kind of cool to mm-hmm. see Padme be cool detective and have a little brain blast and Lolo being like, I would have gotten away with it too. What were you, pesky kids and your meddling dog? <laughs> that that whole bit <laughs> is, I loved it. I like when Scooby-Doo mm-hmm. showed up too. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Didn't like it when Scrappy-Doo showed up. That was less, that was less fun. It was less fun. Never liked Scrappy-Doo. Uh, do you have an MVP suggestion for this episode, Sam? Uh, was Padme? Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. She gets the punch in. She does. She's got to be the, the MVP. Um, main character kills. Lolo's not a main character, right. so uh, no lost limbs and no will home screams as far as I could hear. Uh, more Star Wars is better. Star Wars. How did this episode make the movies and the rest of Star Wars better? We kind of talked about this a little bit already, okay. but just kind of yeah, more insight into the kind of political goings on of the Republic during the war and the struggle that that Padme and some of the other senators go through to to try and like go about things in a way that is this peaceful and rational as opposed to emotionally driven and or or profit driven in a lot of right cases you know it it is also cool to get to see um Senator Organa working with Padme and with Mon Mothma to get to see those three work together just kind of like Mm -hmm. you, you kind of get the like the founding family of the rebellion just kind of working on this mm-hmm. together and they happen to be the only good uh senators yeah. in the republic yeah yeah them and chuchi senator chuchi oh yeah senator chuchi i was forgetting yeah it was like I, I i did remember like watching this episode that moment when i saw the three of them in a room together having a conversation i was like man just like imagining this in like the era of like andor or of, of rogue one like yeah th- like i I imagine, you know, them two thinking back to moments like this with Padme and being like, yeah, she was, she was one of the good ones. She was, it would have been great to have her here. Right. You know, like sad, but like it, it adds a lot to the, to that sort of di- like what I think about those characters and their relationship now. Yep. Yeah. You know? Well, that was, I mean, segment. We did it. We did it. 
surprisingly quickly for i mean it was one, it was episode. one episode but i mean just like we had we also had a lot of stuff to talk about today we star did. wars related so much star um, war much star war very star war very pew 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 there's not a lot of pew 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 cool. like two yep. you were like two pews, just two pews. it was two pew and that was it <laughs> that's it, was it. Over. dude i am excited so there, it was sorry it's a very small chapel it was a very small chapel on two pews. On two pews. So, looking ahead. <laughs> yes. We have two of the best arcs in all of Star Wars are back-to-back, our next two episodes. Jeez, yeah. No kidding. We have the Night Sister arc coming up next, and then the mm-hmm. Mortis arc immediately after that. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's... oh also, this mm-hmm. is our last episode in 21 BBY. Whoa! We did it! We'll be in 20 BBY. That's cool. In the for night sisters for night sisters, happy new year. That's cool. Yeah, man, that is that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> happy new year. Yeah, this is also episode forty of the podcast, Whoa. which feels cool. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I was looking ahead to the to after that. Um, so we you would yeah we get the night sisters arc, we get the mortis arc, and then we get. The Citadel arc, which I think is this the one where, uh, where Echo, quote unquote, dies. Echo. Echo. Tick. Rika. Uh. You get Tarkin. It is Echo. See, Echo and Fives. Trying. Yeah, Cody Rex Echo and Fives. And Plo Koon and Obi Wan and Anakin. Ah, all the good ones. And Ahsoka. Yes. Yeah. Man. But the reason it comes up is because, like, like Echo is, you know, he disappears until the arc with the Bad Batch in season seven, and then he joins the Bad Batch. And so, like, and oh, I just yeah. watched that episode again. So I was like, wow, that's cool. Dude. Coming up. Coming up. Yep. This is good. It's all, it's all, like, all good from here. Just about. I do see. Yeah. I do see a Gungan arc. So, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know. We'll get through it. We'll we'll enjoy it for what it is. Shall overcome. Yeah, and oh man, we are <laughs> shall overcome. We're less than ten episode ten podcast episodes away from Umbara. Ooh. Ooh. Oh gosh. <laughs> we gotta go through Jeez. that. Yeah. Umbara's not oh. <laughs> The Umbara arc. Oh man, those what an arc. Yep. So good. But so uh man. Well, uh yeah so it, it'll be a, another a big episode next week talking about the night sisters arc which is also nice considering that we just recently saw um asajj in uh the bad batch yeah and also so, uh morgan getting... elsbeth in tales of the empire it's a big night like there's the first episode of True. her is all about her with the night sisters so that's cool it is cool rad all right. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us again for this episode of, uh, of Unlimited Content, our podcast where we talk about Star Wars. Um, join us next time. We will be talking about, as we said, uh, the Night Sisters arc, which is the Clone Wars season three, episodes twelve through fourteen. Night Sisters, Monster, and Witches of the Mist. Oh, Monster is the one with Savage. Yeah. So, so we're getting Savage oppressed too. Yep. And does Maul show up at the end of that? I'm trying to. Maybe. I feel like he shows up at the end of Witches of the Mist because, like. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, hold on, I'm looking at it. So, oh, no, so he doesn't show up, but he, it does end with uh, Savage leaving to go and find Maul. Uh, so it's like, yeah, it's like alluding to the fact that Maul is still alive. But, like, we don't see him, I don't think. So. Yep, Mother Talisman yeah. sends him out. Okay, cool. Sweet. And, and before next week, I will watch Tales of the Empire and maybe we can have a little more of an in-depth discussion about That'd that be next good. time. It's, but, uh, it is good. It is good. The more I think about it, the more I like it. Cool. That's good. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining us. May the force be with you. May the fourth be with you, even though this is going to come out like a month after Oops. that. <laughs> like, whatever. I've been behind on my edits, but we'll get there. Uh... Thank you all for listening, and have uh, a good time with your lives, and stay safe, and eat good food, and Ooh. get some sleep, drink water, wear your boots. Don't do spice. So that you can break them in. Don't do spice. And, um, 
Cut that chatter. All right. Cut the chatter. We did it. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Bye! <laughs> All right, cut the chatter. Roger, Roger. <laughs>